Once upon a dream. Once upon a time, as it really was, as told by the prince. In a faraway land long ago lived a king and his fair queen. Many years they had longed for a child, and finally their wish was granted. A daughter was born, and they called her Aurora, for she filled their lives with sunshine. Then a great holiday was proclaimed throughout the kingdom so that all of high or low estate might pay homage to the infant princess. Good King Stefan and his Queen Leah especially made welcome a neighboring king and lifetime friend, for on that day they announced that Philip, his son and heir to Stefan's child, would be betrothed and thus unite the two kingdoms forever. And so the young prince looked, unknowingly, at his infant future bride. Also invited to this happy occasion were the good fairies, Flora, who blessed the princess with beauty and grace, and Fauna, who made her gift of song. But before the third fairy, good fairy, Meriwether, could bestow her gift, the evil fairy Maleficent appeared, angry. She had not been invited to the happy occasion. She, too, gave a gift, but it was a terrible curse. Before the sun sat on Aurora's sixteenth birthday, she would prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. The king and queen were deeply grieved by this, but not all was lost, for the good fairy Mother Meriwether still had her gift to give. She said, Sweet princess, if though this wicked witch's trick, a spindle should your finger prick, a ray of hope there still may be in this, the gift I give to thee, not in death, but just in sleep, the fateful prophecy you'll keep, and from this slumber you shall wake, when true love's kiss the spell shall break. King Stephen, still feel fearful for his daughter's life, did then and there decree that every spinning wheel in the kingdom should on that day be burnt. So it was done. To further protect the king's beloved daughter from evil mischief, the good fairy suggested that they raise Aurora in secret and safety, disguised as peasants, in the middle of the woods far away from everyone. So the king and his queen watched with heavy hearts as their most precious possession, their only child, disappeared into the night. And so for sixteen long years, the whereabouts of the princess remained a mystery, while deep in the forest, in a woodcutter's cottage, the good fairies carried out their well-laid plan. Living like mortals, they reared the child as their own and called her Briar Rose. One day, many years ago, Briar Rose was singing and playing with her animal friends in the woods, when a handsome young man came wandering through the forest, lost. It was Prince Philip. On his way to marry the princess, he had been betrothed to sixteen years earlier, Aurora herself. But upon seeing this beautiful maiden, all thoughts of marrying royalty disappeared. Philip fell madly in love with Briar Rose, and although she too was instantly smitten, the shy girl scampered away like the very deer she befriended. She did promise, however, to meet him again that night. Alas for poor Briar Rose, that was also the night of her sixteenth birthday, the night that she ha was to be returned to the castle. Her sorrowful aunts revealed the truth of who they were and who she was, and how she would marry the prince of the neighboring kingdom on the morrow. At the castle, weeping and alone in her new gown and tiara, the Princess Aurora fell victim to the spell cast by the evil Maleficent. She followed the evil fairy's voice th through the secret door and found an enchanted spinning wheel, the last one left in the kingdom. Compelled by Maleficent, Aurora reached out and pricked her finger on the spindle. Immediately, she fell into a deep, death-like sleep. The three good fairies put everyone in the kingdom to sleep upon, so that upon awakening, Aur Aurora wouldn't feel strange and alone. Just before falling under the fairy spell, Philip's father revealed to King Stephen how his son had unfortunately fallen in love with a peasant girl and intended to marry her. The three fairies instantly realized what this meant, that Prince Philip was Aurora's one true love and could break the spell that held her. They raced back to their cottage in the woods, where Philip was to meet Briar Rose. Unfortunately, the ever-scheming Maleficent had arrived there first and grabbed the prince, throwing him into the deepest dungeon. Using stealth and magic, the three good fairies managed to free the prince. With the help of an ens ensorcelled shield and, s and sword, Philip defeated the evil Maleficent once and for all, even after she turned herself into a sulfurous, fire-breathing dragon. The three fairies then led the victorious prince to the chamber where Aur Aurora slept. Upon seeing his beautiful briar rose, Philip knelt at her side and immediately gave her true love's kiss. Princess Aurora woke, saw the prince, and was overjoyed. The two were married the next day, to the rejoicing of all, and lived happily ever after.